Today we're going to be taking a closer look at True Leaf stock, and this is on the heels of a presentation that we did days ago on a bullish outlook for the cannabis space. And when it comes to True Leaf, it's the only cannabis stock that we're holding at the moment. It's one of the largest multi-state operators in the United States. And we check in with firms about once a year. We find that cadence to be sufficient and it helps eliminate the noise that you often get in quarterly earnings reports. So today we're going to take a look at what TrueLeaf has been up to. And the goal of this presentation is to decide whether or not we want to add some more shares to our existing position. So when you look at what cannabis investors are asking YouTube, it's quite comical, this question they're asking here, why weed stocks are not working. And by working, uh, I assume they mean showing a profit. Well, it's not just about having a paper profit. You have to also decide when to sell a stock. And we're going to talk about the phases the cannabis market will likely go through in the coming years, provided that legalization happens. Now, when it comes to True Leave, you can see here their regional strategy. So they have three places in the United States that they're looking to expand, and presumably when legalization happens, then they'll be able to start uh, operating across state lines and putting together supply chains that make more sense as opposed to having to build a supply chain in each state because cannabis remains illegal at the federal level. So the reason we originally decided to invest in TrueLeave was their consistent profitability over the past 15 quarters, their ability to secure a large amount of funding under favorable terms, and also their closure of the biggest M&A event in cannabis history. Now, whether or not that acquisition was successful or not remains to be seen. But there's another question that we're asking ourselves as we watch the performance of cannabis stocks, and that is, are multi-state operators, what we call MSOs, are those an equivalence class? And by that, I mean when I used to test software. If you were testing a software component and you had 100 tests, each one ought to test something distinctly different. You wouldn't test the same thing multiple times. And a category of tests that does is referred to as a, an equivalence class, meaning they all perform roughly the same function. So here you can see True Leaves revenues on a quarterly basis, and you can see that they've stalled over the past quarter, and I've put uh, Q4 2022 in here based on estimates, so we can see that uh, revenue growth has stalled, and of course, that's a bit concerning. Why? Well, according to the company, this recent quarter was down for a number of reasons, one being Hurricane Ion, that uh, Ian, I suppose, that wreaked havoc across the state. Arizona had seen increased pricing pressure. That's something that uh, raises our eyebrows a bit, because we recently did a piece, I'll put it in the description of this video, on how cannabis users will change their behaviors in a bear market. And we would presume that in the face of a recession, people tighten their purse strings and they start buying lower tier products. Again, we see here in Pennsylvania, it says that they saw higher sales of mid and value tier products. And that this whole slide here goes to the importance of having geographical diversification. So if one area of the United States isn't doing so well, and maybe the other is. And also we noted that they spent $10 million on this Smart and Safe Florida campaign, which hopes to legalize adult use in Florida by 2024. Remarkably, Florida's only medical use, and that's, uh, you know, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, medical, right? But the idea here is that TrueLeaf has a market share leadership of 50% in the state of Florida, and that if there's legalization for adult use, then there's a $6 billion total addressable market that they can capture a lot of. So when we think about revenue growth stalling, what's quite interesting is when we did this analysis here on sequential quarterly revenue growth across the six biggest multi-state operators. Look at that. They're either flat or marginally growing or going in the opposite direction. So Across the board, we're seeing cannabis MSOs have a problem with revenue growth. Another interesting trend that we've spotted here is the largest MSO is arguably Cureleaf. Uh, TrueLeaf is not that far behind in terms of revenues. But look at here at these gross margin compressions over time. Wow, right? So every quarter, their gross margins seem to compress even more and more. Is that 
pricing pressure. It's hard to say what that is, but when you start to see it across multiple large operators, that certainly tells you something. Now, when we look at TrueLeave's ability to survive any sort of turmoil without having to raise more money, they have upwards of $550 million in debt at an interest rate of 8.3%. And this commitment for $70 million in real estate-backed financing at a favorable rate that's said to be less than existing debt. And they have $114 million in cash on hand. So our hope is that that money, alongside the $70 million in financing that they've raised, will help them make it through to positive operating cash flow next year. So they expect to realize positive operating cash flow during the fourth quarter. And the conversation in, in their um, quarterly notes and whatnot, the impression that we get is that they're not expecting to have to sell more equity or issue more debt. And that was the whole reason that we found TrueLeave to be so attractive is because if they're operating a profitable business. They don't have to deal with the pains of trying to raise capital in a market that frowns upon investing in cannabis because it's still illegal at a federal level. Now, when we look at how much this market has corrected, I thought it was important to take a look at, uh, just put this in perspective. So um, this was a piece that we did not too, well, this would have been, I guess, three years ago or so, but um, Molson Coors had brought in about $11 billion in revenues during 2017. So this was more, this was what, five years ago. And Canopy Growth, look at them, right alongside their um, market cap, what, upwards of $11 billion. So around the same size as Molson Coors. And in order for Canopy Growth to reach more than $10 billion in revenues to match Molson Coors, they'd need 25% growth in revenues every year for 20 years. That's how overpriced they were. And look at on the upper right here is a chart that shows how they actually stopped growing revenues. And we don't follow Canopy Growth very closely. We mainly follow US MSOs. But today, Canopy Growth has a market cap of $1.38 billion. Note that all of the six largest MSOs in the United States, their collective market cap is less than Molson Coors at $10 billion. So that just goes to show how hyped cannabis was. Now, when it comes to market timing and trimming, I wanted to talk a little bit about this. So the events that we're going to watch for would be legalization is inevitable. So there's some bill that's just been passed. Then the actual legalization that happens. Then U.S. listings start happening where the MSOs move from Canada to the United States. And then you start seeing M&A events. What you would expect to see alongside these various milestones would be a lot of hype. So we would possibly look to trim our position in in the face of such hype. And one of the ways you can tell it's hype is when all the MSS, MSOs start moving together, as we mentioned earlier, this equivalence class. So if they're all moving together, then that just tells you that it's hype. And we would look to trim our stock, um, especially, as I said, if the entire domain is performing similarly. And you know, if you have a position that doubles, then you can sell half that and recover your entire cost basis. That's a very valuable way that risk-averse investors can look to place bets and minimize their losses. NVIDIA is a great example. We recovered our cost base eight times over. It's still our largest holding, and we were recently selling shares of it uh, to recover even more. So uh, once you're able to harvest a uh, a stock, it makes sense to do that. The reason we're harvesting NVIDIA is because of a limitation in our portfolio. We don't want it to exceed uh, 10 to 11 percent. So we may look to trim our position in TrueLeave, uh, or we may exit that position in the face of an M&A event, of course, but um, our annual premium subscribers will be alerted as to whether or not we add shares or if we sell shares. So just to conclude, MSOs, seem to be an equivalence class in that they're having revenue stalled. They're seeing gross margins compressed. Uh, that's something that talks to overall industry trends. TrueLeave appears to be focused on reducing cash burn, which is great, uh, and they shouldn't need to raise more cash. Let's hope they don't. 
Now, I'll finalize this by saying a large brokerage firm once audited their accounts and they found that the best performing accounts were those individuals who forgot they had an account or were dead. So patience is a virtue. MSOs, cannabis stocks are not working because it takes time for returns to happen and then you have to worry about capturing that alpha. So I put up a video here on uh, a bullish thesis for cannabis. Please make sure to click the Nanolize logo here and subscribe to our channel. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this today.